So, let's see how masking works in ZBrush. So, in order to mask, you press down the command key, or more precisely, command key on Mac and control key on PC. So, we press it down, and we can see that the cursor changed yellow. And there is also that small text indicating that the brush is in fact in masking mode. So, let's draw on the mesh, and we can see that the, we are now painting a mask. And by pressing down Ctrl or Command and Alt, we can uh, turn into this masking, unmasking mode, so we, we can unmask the masked portions of the mesh. So command to mask and command and alt to unmask. And what masking does is that it protects the area that we have masked. So let's take a look how that works. So I now have the standard brush and I'm going to sculpt the mesh and we can see that the march masked portions were not affected. So, oh, and uh, in order to clear the mask, we just press down the uh, command key and drag outside of the mesh. Then, let's draw a pupil in there. So, in order to invert a mask, we just quite simply again press down the command key and then tap outside of the mesh. Like so. And then, um, let's take a look at how we can blur the mask. So let's draw a mouth for this fella, and then, uh, then press down the command key again, again, and just tap on the mesh. And you can see how the mask is gradually blurring. And now, let's see how different it looks from the eyes that we created. So, a lot, a lot less steep cavity compared to the eyes. Okay, so, so we can also blur and you guessed it right, we can also sharpen a mask, so let's do that as well. So I'm going to draw this circle in here, and then we press down Command and Alt, and we tap on the mesh. And now let's zoom in, and let's draw next to it, and you can clearly see that this is a lot sharper. Uh -huh. Okay, for some reason the sharpened uh, mask became, became blurrier after I hit the command and set to undo the stroke that I had did there, done there. Anyway, so let's invert that mask and so as you can see this is this is now very crisp, very sharp edge because the mask was so strong. 
so sharp. Okay. So these are these are the basics of masking. Uh, and I'm also going to take a look at some other other mask brushes. So let's go here. Let's hit the M key and this mask pen here is what we're, we were using and you can see that in addition to the ma mask pen there are many others many other mask brushes as well so they, let's just take a quick look at what they do so mask lasso that's also a pretty good brush so hit down the command key and yes we can mask lasso things. I'll take the X symmetry off so it's clear. So we can ma uh, mask or lasso mask an area. And of course just like in the just like in the with the uh, mask pen brush we can also press down the command key and alt in order to unmask an area and in that in addition to that there is also the possibility to move this lassoed area around by hitting uh, or pressing down the space bar and the same we can also do when pressing down ALT to unmask. Okay, so that was the lasso, the mask lasso. Then there is, for example, this mask circle, which has the exact same commands. So we press down the command key and we get this circle that we can shape into anything that what we want. And by pressing down the command and alt, we can unmask. And we can also move this about by pressing down the space bar. Okay. And then if we want a perfect circle, there's also a brush for that. Like so. And then uh, there is mask rectangle. And quite self-explanatory, really. So it's a rectangle and again with the space bar we can move move this about. Then there is mask square which produces this square. Okay, and then, well, then there is this, this mask curve pen, and well, let's take a look at it as well. So, this is not something that you will use very often, sorry. So command key down and it draws this curve and then when we press down the command key again and draw out of the curve we can see that there is this well there's this mask forming around the curve and the size of this masked uh, area depends on our draw size. So let's bump that up and as you can see it 
was clearly bigger. Oops. So that's uh, I presume that's really mm, not something you will use every day, but maybe maybe it's good for creating ornaments or some something well. This, of course, can be done with just damn standard or just basic standard brush or something. But anyway, maybe you can find some use for that at some point. And finally, there is this mask curve. Um, again, not as good as, for example, mask lasso and mask pen, but for the sake of being thorough, let's take a look how this works. So we pr we're pressing down the command key again, and we can see this this straight line, this vector being drawn. And then, if we hit the Alt key, we can make a turn. Let, let's hit the Alt key again, and can again make a turn. And if we press down the space bar. We can again move this shape about, and when we release the buttons, it is masking that area. So, very similar to Mask Lasso, but just quite simply a bit more um, if we want to make really, really defined masks. Like really like a turn there and then a turn here and so on then hmm? then this is this is good and that's it about those those masking brushes I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do with uh, regarding masking uh, with the use of transpose line. So let's hit this move button here. So as you know by now, okay, it became there. Okay, as you know know by now by clicking on the on the move button here, you get this move transpose tool but if you deactivate this button here gizmo 3d then the trans uh, transform tool is changed into this transpose line and you can draw it on, on anywhere and it it will attach to the mesh so let's take a quick look about how to mask using it. So I'm going to just draw the transpose line. I'm just drawing it on the mesh, nothing more. Just drawing it here, and uh, we can see that it's it's attaching to the mesh. And now I'm just going to press down the Alt key. And uh, oop, that's not what I meant. I'm going to take down to subdivision levels. Uh, was it in? Wait a minute. Was it Control and Alt? Ah, it was command and shift. Sorry about that. So anyway, so we can we can mask using the transpose line, and this can be very 
fast and easy way to get into areas that that are really hard to reach. So a quick and easy way to manipulate something like this. And I'm also going to uh, I'm going to blur this mask a bit. So command down, press command down and tap and we can see that the mask is softening there, blurring there. Okay. And then let's open up oops. Let's open up this mouth a bit. Um, um okay. And then Just unmask and let's go back to the highest subdivision level where all the details have been preserved. And there we go. Okay, so then I'm also going to show one. Uh, one good way of using the masking feature. So, oh, I'm going to pick the mask pen. Okay, and just quickly mask some scales here. Okay, and then something in here as well, just, just some quick scales in there. I presume that you already know what I'm going after, but I'm Just going to quickly show. Oops. Okay, I guess I guess that's enough. Well, we can make a couple of scales here as well. Okay, and then let's reverse the mask by tapping outside of the mesh uh, while command key is down and then let's go here into the deformation tab and there's this inflate inflate slider so I'll just inflate it a little so now I'm going to clear the mask. So command and drag outside of the mesh. And now we can see what it looks like. So now I could continue uh, you know, going about creating more of these scales for this beastie and refining the forms and so forth. But anyway, so that's that's enough basics about masking. Basically, you just most of the time you just need the mask pen feature, and you just need to remember that that command is to mask, and command and alt is to unmask. And then there is uh, to reverse the mask. You just quite simply press down the command key and tap outside of the mesh and uh, to re um, invert the mask you, you drag outside uh, sorry uh, to remove the mask clear the mask you drag outside of the mesh okay
that's that's about that subject.